Bibles. Turn to the book of Genesis chapter number 22. Turn to Genesis chapter 22 and Hebrews chapter number 11. When you get there to those two places, just hold your places there. We're going to begin in Genesis 22 and then uh, pull thought as well from Hebrews chapter number 11. Hebrews chapter number 11. And I would I, I would ask you tonight if you could to I, I know this uh, brother Larry just talked from this passage and I think our pastor just hit a little bit from this passage which fueled my thinking along these lines and uh, but then also when we when we are familiar with a, a passage of scripture um, we just really need to be focused on it's the word of God amen and even though we've heard it before. Uh, it, uh, believe me when I say uh, you could read it for a thousand times in a row and God give you something else uh, so I would ask really really pay attention to the word of God tonight and honor the word of God in Genesis chapter number tw 22 and Hebrews chapter number 11 so let's begin reading in verse number 1 Genesis 22 the Bible says and it came to pass after these things that God did tempt Abraham and said unto him Abraham and he said, Behold, here I am. And he said, Take now thy son, thine only son Isaac, whom thou lovest, and get thee into the land of Moriah, and offer him there for a burnt offering upon the mountains, which I will tell thee of. Now first off, the doctrine of first mention, which we know the first word that's mentioned in the Bible, and it lays the groundwork for how that word's used. Notice that word lovest, that's the first time that it's used in the Bible, and it's the love between a father and the son. Amen. Well, if that don't bless your heart, the whole Bible's about the love between God the Father and God the Son to send him to die for us. Amen. What a blessing. And then about verse number 3. And Abraham rose up early in the morning and saddled his ass and took two of his young men with him. And Isaac his son and clave the wood for the burnt offering and rose up and went unto the place of which God had told him. Now we'll come back to that phrase in a moment. But notice that phrase, the place. Verse number 4. Then on the third day, Abraham lifted up his eyes and saw the place afar off. And Abraham said unto his young men, Abide ye here with the ass, and I and the lad will go yonder and worship and come again to you. Notice that's the first time, again, it's mentioned worship. That's the first time worship is mentioned in the Bible. Hallelujah. Verse number 6. And Abraham took the wood of the burnt offering and laid it upon Isaac his son and took, he took the fire in his hand and, not, and a knife and they both went both of them together and Isaac spake unto Abraham his father and said my father and he said here I am here am I my son and he said behold the fire and the wood but where is the lamb for a burnt offering and Abraham said my son God will provide himself a lamb for a burnt offering so they went both of them together Verse number 9. And they came to the place which God had told him of. And Abraham built an altar there and laid the wood in order and bound Isaac his son and laid him on the altar upon the wood. The first mention of the word order. Amen. That's a good place for it. Verse number 10. And Abraham stretched forth his hand, took the knife to slay his son. And the angel of the Lord called unto him out of heaven and said, Abraham, Abraham. And he said, Here am I. And he said, Lay not thine hand upon the lad, neither do thou anything unto him, for now I know that thou fearest God, seeing thou hast not withheld thy son, thine only son from me. And Abraham lifted up his eyes and looked, and behold him, a ram called in a thicket by his horns. And Abraham went and took the ram and offered him up for a burnt offering in the stead of his son. And Abraham called the name of the place Jeho Jehovah Jireh. And it is said, To this day in the mount of the Lord it shall be seen. The angel of the Lord called unto Abraham out of heaven the second time and said, By myself have I sworn, saith the Lord, for because thou hast done this thing and hast not withheld thy son, thine only son, that in blessing I will bless thee, and in multiplying I will multiply thy seed, as the stars 
in heaven, of the heaven, and as the sand which is upon the seashore. And thy seed shall possess the gate of his enemies, and in thy seed shall all the nations of the earth be blessed, because thou hast obeyed my voice. Let's ask the Lord's blessing. Heavenly Father, we thank you in Jesus' name, Father, for this time of worship. Father, thank you for your word. And Father, thank you for Emmanuel Baptist Church. And Lord, all those, Lord, that have made it possible through prayer, through labor, through uh, sweat and tears, and, and God, through much prayer, and God, through serving you all the years, Lord, leading up to today. Lord, we thank you, Father, for all those that have made this possible. But Father, we thank Jesus Christ, your Son, Lord, for making it possible on the cross of Calvary. Lord, for us to be here tonight. And God, I just pray for just a, a few more minutes, God, as we gather around your word that, Heavenly Father, that Jesus Christ would show up in our midst tonight and speak to our hearts. Father, I just pray for your blessing, for your power. Lord, I acknowledge that in my own flesh, that Lord, I have no righteousness. Father, there's nothing in my flesh that could help this church. There's nothing in my flesh that's going to be able to do anything for Emmanuel Baptist Church. But God, I yield myself to you, Lord, in the power of the Holy Spirit, that God, for just a few minutes, Lord, that you would show up in the Holy Ghost of God would fill this place. Lord, that Jesus Christ would get uh, all the glory. That Jesus would be the center of attention. And Father, as we read your word, and God, I pray that you would give me the very thought, the very chapter, the very verse, Lord, the very context. And Lord, I pray that Lord, as your vessel, God, given this opportunity tonight, Lord, to stand behind this pulpit, God, that I would not say anything that would defame the name of Jesus Christ or hinder you your word, Lord, that would cause a sinner not to get saved by the grace of God. Lord, I pray that tonight that you would take complete control, that you would orchestrate, Lord, every word, Lord, every sound and enunciation of the tone of my voice. God, I pray that the Holy Ghost of God would have preeminence. God, we rebuke every demon, every devil, every hindrance, every spiritually wicked thing. God, I pray that all pride, all envy and strife and discord, God, we rebuke that in the name of Jesus Christ. Lord, that sinners might get saved. That your people might hear your voice and be obedient. That the church might grow. That faith might be restored. That that one that's hurting. Lord, I know that there's many here in our midst tonight that may be broken and hurting from Satan. And God, what he's done to them, maybe their homes or their lives over the past few days or weeks. God, Satan is on the attack and he's on the advance and he's trying to destroy homes and Christians. So Father I pray that what Satan's torn up and broken apart God I pray that through the preaching of thy word, through the listening of your voice, through the sound of the Holy Ghost and Father through the power of your word I pray that you would restore what Satan has broken. I pray that for a little while now Father you would speak to our hearts. Uh, Lord I pray that that one that may be lost or those that may be uh, lost and without Christ. Lord would you open their blinded eyes. Show them that they're going to live in hell for eternity. But Lord, I pray that they would look to Jesus tonight and live. And I pray, God, you'd bless your word now. In Jesus' name, amen. I want you to look at those, the phrase there in verse number 3, in verse number 9, and also in verse number 4. The Bible says here in verse number 3, and rose up and went unto the place of which God had told him. Now when the Lord says something one time, we ought to listen to everything in His Word. Amen? But when God says something twice, we ought to really perk up. But when He says it three times... That means we better pay attention. Amen. I mean, we should have, God should have our full and undivided attention about the very context of this chapter. You say, Brother Lawrence, I don't believe it's about the place. Well, turn over to Hebrews chapter number 11. Because whoever wrote, we believe it's the Apostle Paul. He had, listen, I believe everything, every, all the scriptures given by inspiration of God. Well, boy, I like it when, uh, 
We read in the New Testament about what they read in the Old Testament. Amen. And then the Holy Ghost of God got into that writer as they pinned down the Word of God. And, and then the Holy Spirit of God speaks to us. Look at this. In Hebrews chapter number 11, look at verse number 8. By faith Abraham, when he was called to go out and to a place which he should after receive for an inheritance, obeyed. And he went out, not knowing whether he went. By faith he sojourned in the land of promise, as in a strange country, dwelling in tabernacles with Isaac and Jacob, the heirs with him of the same promise. For he looked for a city which hath foundations, whose builder and maker is God. So we find in Hebrews 11 verse number 8, by faith Abraham, when he was called to go out into a place, and then here in verse number 3 we find the place and then in verse number 4 in Genesis 22 then on the third day Abraham lifted up his eyes and saw the place and verse number 9 and they came to the place which God had told him of now first of all when I read that over and over and over again and I, the Lord begins to speak to my heart about that yes Abraham took his son and they went to a physical place but when I read this brother Josh my mind and the Holy Spirit of God starts stirring down on the inside and starts to reveal to me some things about the place in your life and the place in my life and the place in the church's life that we are spiritually amen because sometimes in our life we get to the place and our worship we get to a place in our service for God and we, so we look around brother Brian we figure out man look where I'm how did I get here well I mean brother Doug preaches or the preacher preaches and I just don't feel right or I'm just not getting it or I'm just not growing my dear friend where are you at in the place in the walk with the Lord Jesus Christ I mean are you at the place where his power and his love amen I'm listen are you getting this amen please help me out amen I don't want to be like the preacher brother Doug preached about that tells everybody to say amen but Lord have mercy don't make me preach my lungs out amen hallelujah what I'm trying to tell you look here church Abraham got to the place are you all getting this God says, Abraham, get your son and get to the place. So the question is, for a few minutes when we preach, where is the place that God would have you? I mean, look here, church. I mean, for the last year or two years or months, maybe it's just a few days, God's been a... Brother Doug's been a plow in your row. I'm talking about the Holy Ghost of God has been sitting in your lap service after service saying get to that altar. Give that to me. Trust in me. But you ain't got to that place. You ain't got to that place. You say what's that place? Well here he gave his only son. He gave his only Church, I'm not asking you to sacrifice your kids on an altar. And neither is Jesus. Are you hearing me? Hey, I tell them boys down at the jail. I tell them I don't mess around there. Listen, the Satan is coming there. The JW is coming there. Uh, I mean, the Mormons coming there. The Muslims go in there. I say, look my God don't ask me to die for him he died for me so he doesn't want you to die for him he doesn't want your kids to die for him he wants you to live for him amen and living for him living for him means getting to the place brother Brian getting to the place where's the place 
down in here amen down deep on the inside when no one's around when the preacher's not around when the wife's not around when you get down on your knees and you pray and God says that thing I want that but you won't give it until you give it you ain't going to have power with me amen that's the place brother Brian he said we all look at me like well brother Lawrence I don't know no I can tell you right now if you're saved and you pray the Holy Ghost says that thing and if he doesn't you don't pray enough he said brother Lawrence you think you're holy no I don't I need to be a whole lot more holier are you hearing me what I'm telling you is the Holy Ghost ain't going to let you have anything in your life that He won't come speak to you about that. Well, hallelujah. The place. Well, I better get going. That has nothing to do with what I'm talking about. You all thought I was talking about that. Amen. So, dealing with the thought of that place get into that place have you come to the place in your life where God can use you and we're going to come back to that thought in a minute but the place I'm going to preach this for a little bit with the Lord's help on some places that Satan hates some places that Satan hates so first off here tonight, first of all, Satan hates salvation's place. Amen. Amen. I can tell you this for just a minute. Look here. I don't know who it was I was talking to. It was, I tell you what, it was Brother Billy. Brother Billy just joined our church a couple weeks ago. He pulled me and the pastor aside on Sunday night and he said, he said, Brother Doug, Brother Lawrence, ever since I joined this church, ever since I've been praying, and ever since I've been reading your Bible, are you here in this church? You and I could have both finished this sentence, right? He said, everything has fell apart. I said, glory to God. Amen. Hallelujah. Why? That means he's doing something. Amen. Why? Can I tell you something, church? Listen, the Lord, hey, hey, he's opened that door down at the jail 30, 40 years ago. People have prayed. People have labored. And I'm telling you, Satan's on a rampage. He's destroying families with dope and heroin and drugs and alcohol and lies upon lies and I'm telling you society and America and Florence, Kentucky and the tri-state area I'm telling you church listen to me they're buying it hook, line and sinker they're diving head first and we try to go down to the jails to try to get them to see that hate Satan hates salvation I'm here to tell you church we can't go down there and people get born again by the grace of God and come back in here and tiptoe through the tulips I'm here to tell you listen to me church you pray for your pastor you pray for his family you pray for the Emmanuel Baptist Church because I'm here to tell you Satan's got him lined up he's a watching you he's got a bull's eye on you and if you think look here if you think for a minute we're going to put your name on this list and commit to pray and pray for the jail and lead people to Jesus and set them free from their addictions by the power and grace of God. You think Satan's going to allow that to happen? You better wake up, amen. You better wake up. Hallelujah. I'm telling you right now, I'm telling you right now, it ain't going to happen. We just come in here. Whew. Amen. So in the prayer request, you start looking around like, well, what's going on? I tell you what's going on right there that's what's going on Satan hates salvation's place let me first off say Satan hates salvation's place before we get saved <laughs> 
Okay, before you got saved, Satan told you, look at here, look at here, look here. Lost sinner tonight, if there's anyone, look, look at me now. If there's anybody in here that's playing around with your soul, I'm talking about you're rolling the dice, you're turning the chamber, I'm telling you, you're playing with fire, literally hellfire. You're counting on growing up to be an adult, or you're counting on God live, let you live in another day. You're counting on growing and living and sowing your wild oats. Oh, my friend, listen to me. If safe, if God's been dealing with your heart, when the word of God's preached, if you feel that stirring, I'm telling you, hell is hot and death is sure and eternity is long. Hell is hot, death is sure and eternity is long, my friend. You listen to that. You listen to those words and let that sink in you will live there you will live there and that's why Satan hates salvation because he know you won't live there and he know God will set you free and God will save you so my friend if you've been playing around look here if you've been playing around thinking you got plenty of time I tell you what the Apostle Paul said. You're taking advantage of God's grace. Hey, man. Hey, you take advantage of me. That's one thing. I'll probably let you buy with it. My wife hates that. She says, you're too nice. I'm only like this up here. Hey, man. I'm nice, Brother Gary, aren't I, outside? Hey, man. Okay, hey, man. I'm only like this in the pulpit. Everybody, man, you can take advantage of me. Hey, I'm just being honest. I wear my heart on my sleeve. Hey, Amen. Hallelujah. But why would you take advantage of King Jesus? Amen. His love and His grace. Why would you take advantage of the God man that they nailed to a cross and cleared their throats on Him and ripped His organs out? I'm telling you, church, why would you do that? If you're lost here tonight, why? Don't leave here lost. Don't leave here. Don't think you'll get oh, I'll get saved when the preacher gets back. Well, you've done Satan's lied to you again and you believed it. Amen. Well, he hates salvation after you get saved. There's a, what we call t eternal security. Amen, Brother Seth. Every time. I thank the Lord for saving me. Hallelujah. You know what he's happy about? He's saved and saved forever. Amen. Hey, if you're saved, you're saved forever. And Satan can't stand it. Amen. He can't stand that you're saved forever. First off, let me say this. He hates salvation at salvation's place before, salvation's place after. I tell you what else, church, look here. You can never forget the place where God saved you. Amen. Amen. Hey, the moment you forget where the place where God saved you, I'm telling you, that's the moment, my friend. Grab your Bible, get on your knees, and call the preacher and call upon God. Amen. Because you should never forget that place. It should be etched in here. It should be etched upon the tables of your heart. It should be a place. Look here. Hey, listen. That place where I got saved at 139 Carlisle Street, Erlanger, Kentucky, my friends, that's a special place. Because that's the place. Hey, I remember that. I got fond memories of my mother. First off, you should, church, you should never forget the people that led you to the place. Yeah. Amen. Right. Hey, if you're here tonight and Brother Brother Foster or Brother Mike Goodson or one of the preachers in this church preached and opened this Bible, listen to me. They prayed and they prayed and they got up and preached and the Holy Ghost of God knocked on your heart and you got saved under their preaching but filled with the Holy Spirit of God. Hey, they led you to the place. They didn't save you but they preached the gospel and led you there. You should never forget forget that amen 
I for hey, listen, I remember my mom and my dad. My mom and dad, good godly people. I'm not trying to pump them up. I'm just saying, I'm thankful I, I was raised in a Christian home. Hey, and my dad wasn't always a Christian. He spent 11 years in, a, in prison. And you know who came to preach to him? Jail preachers. Amen. Hey, are y'all getting a smile? Amen. Amen. <laughs> Brother Brian, I thought that was good. Amen. What I'm trying to say is, you don't think that Jesus smiles when you see my dad all tatted up? 11 years in prison. We got, he got out of jail. And uh, thank God for a godly woman, amen, that had red hair and he loved her, amen. That was a good, that, that doesn't always work out that way. But church, my mom loved him and prayed for him. He would beat us kids. He would spend all his money at the bar. Hey, he would come home. I remember, hey, my dad would come through the door when the, I would be watching like cartoons like Superman, wearing my Superman PJs. And the lights would come on in the front, in the yard, in the driveway. I would jump up and run to my room and jump up in the bed and cover my head up you know why because he wasn't always saved amen that's why I sing that song thanks to Calvary amen I'm not the man I used to be hey that song it said hey I came home and my little boy ran and hid behind the door that was me that kid was me hey he would find something wrong he would whip us for no reason but oh my goodness I'm glad that in the jail in the prisons brother Brian the preacher came my dad said he preached he said son the preachers that came they preached just like you I said praise the Lord amen he said I didn't get saved in there he said I didn't get saved in there but every message they preached it almost like the Lord put a recorder in my head amen so think about what's going on down there brother Josh every time you preach nobody gets saved what's going on up there holy ghost of God puts a recorder in there they might never come here they might not walk an aisle down there. He said, Lawrence, he said, all them messages and uh, Brother Dave Jones and uh, Brother, uh, Brother Dave Jones and uh, Brother McCracken, uh, Brother James, Brother, I don't know if anybody knows any of those guys. They're old. I think Brother McCracken just passed away. But uh, uh, Brother Dave Jones, pastor's down here still, amen, long-legged Dave Jones. He came and they would knock on the door. Bill, you going to church? I told you guys I'm not going slam the door they would come week after week after week hey when you ask somebody to come to church and they say no they say in sales the first no is always yes amen amen just keep asking and finally they knocked one more time brother Gary and my dad said I'll go just if you all quit coming to my house Y'all know the end of the story, don't you? Hey, he went one time and all the messages that the jail preacher preached, all the times the Holy Ghost of God knocked on his heart. I'm telling you, he jumped into that altar. I'm telling you, oh, oh, Bill Longworth, uh, drinking, boozing, partying, fighting, beating his kid. I'm here to tell you, he was changed. He was made a new creature. Hey, he put this Bible under his arm he poured out all the whiskey amen I'm telling you he's different amen got born again hallelujah salvation's place he hates it I'm glad for my mom my dad and every preacher hallelujah I remember down there at Orchard Street man brother Jim White I would stand under I would get up under the first pew amen in amazement I remember Jim White taking off his shoe and beating the pulpit with it me just a little kid down there looking thinking boy I want to do that one day hey man hey man remember Jim White don't you brother James never forget the preachers that pray for you 
that labor for you, that led you to the place. Somebody told you about Jesus. Amen. Well, secondly, He hates your secret place. So turn with me real quick, real quickly, church. Psalm 91, and then turn to Matthew chapter 6. Turn to Psalm 91. I, you say, Brother Lawrence, I, I, know, I already know Psalm 91. I just want to show you something. I want to show you this. I want to show you this. Psalm 91. When you get to Psalm 91, turn to Matthew chapter 6. Psalm 91, Matthew 6. Satan hates your secret place. So let's look at Psalm or Psalm 91, Matthew 6. Look at verse Matthew 6, verse 4. Let's look there first. Everybody got it? I want you to see this. Matthew 6, verse 4. That thine alms may be in secret, and thy father which seeth in secret himself shall reward thee openly. But watch this. And when thou prayest, thou shalt not be as the hypocrites are. For they love to pray standing in the synagogues and in the corners of the streets that they may be seen of men. Verily I say unto you, they have their reward. But thou, when thou prayest, enter into thy closet. And when thou, look here, and when thou hast shut thy door, pray to the fa thy father which is in secret. Y'all see that? Pray to thy Father which is in secret, and thy Father which seeth in secret shall reward thee openly. Now, Psalm 91. He that dwelleth in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. I will say of the Lord, He is my refuge and my fortress. My God in Him will I trust. Surely, look here, not maybe. Y'all seeing this? This is not Joel Osteen prosperous gospel, amen. This is Bible, amen. What I'm trying to show you, church, it says, surely He shall deliver thee from the snare of the fowler and from the noisome pestilence he shall cover thee with his feathers and under his wings shalt thou trust his truth shall be thy shield and buckler look here Thou shalt not be afraid for terror for the terror by night nor but for the arrow that flieth by day in other words church look here if you pray in secret are you all getting this help me help me here hang on if you look here if you get to the place where Abraham did and you know according to your Bible to get to that place what did he do he built an altar what do you do on an altar amen what do you do right here brother Gary and what do you bring there? Everything, amen. Yeah. You don't, you bring it there and you leave it there, amen. That's an altar. Hey, you bring your sacrifice to the altar. You bring your heart. You bring your addictions. You bring your sin. Hey, you bring your envy, your pride, your arrogance. Hey, all your strife. I'm telling you, you bring it to the altar and you give it to God. But I'm trying to show you, church, help me here. Oh, if you want to get to look here if you want to get to the place where Abraham was spiritually now that spiritual place to the place where God has wanted for you and has been begging you and been knocking on your heart's door to get to oh my friends you see God has made that way right here he gave it to the pastor the pastor brought it before the church you may be going through some things you may be going through a trial by the way can I say this if you ain't never had a trial 
Maybe God's not trusting you with one. But if you got a bunch of them, maybe God has a lot of faith in you. Amen. Are you all getting this? Amen. Trials. I know this is hard preaching, Brother Jordan. Trials show that God loves you. Amen. That's hard, ain't it? That's hard preaching. Trials show that God says, I'm going to give him one more because he's been praying a lot and I like to spend time in fellowship with him. Now that's God loving you. But what you don't see, hold on, everybody look here. Look here. No iPods, no iPads, nothing right here. Listen to me, church. Are you hearing me? When you get to the place and your prayer commitment time and you're in your closet in that secret place, Brother Gary, no one knows about it. Amen. You say, Brother Lawrence, I never have time. Wherever the kids are, you go somewhere else. And if that don't work, you get in the car and drive and leave the phone at the house. Because I meet with Jesus in my car. Hour, hour and 15 minutes in traffic. Amen. Jesus is omnipresent. Do you know He doesn't just meet here at the house? At the church house. He get in your car, Brother Brian. What I'm trying to say is, church, if you can get right here, just 15 minutes, and in your car or on your knees, when you come to God, it's not about some type of flowery prayer. It's not about anything else. It's only about... Look here, church, listen. You're coming to Him and you sincerely from your heart you want to meet with God now sometimes what that means before you pour out your heart to God and he's going to get you to that place and he's going to show up in your closet and get so big you're going to have to come out of your closet amen and find a bigger room amen what I'm trying to tell you is if you get to that place you're going to have to give up some sin amen because there was a preacher I know by the name of Brother Bell he said Brother Lawrence the reason we don't have revival is because of one thing sin church look at me we me we love our sin more than we love the place and the power and the fruit that God will give and the power and the blessings amen that God will give when we get into this right there the place right here you say brother Lawrence I want to get to the secret place it's been here for weeks weeks are you hearing me church weeks you say brother Lawrence you have no idea what's happened in my life church listen to me Brother Doug, Brother Doug Harrell preached on it. Then Brother Foster preached on it. You remember over there where he fed the multitudes? After, look here church. After he fed the multitudes. The Bible says he wanted to go pray. Read your Bible. Read John. He wanted to go pray. And then he told the disciples, get in the ship and go to the other side. Are you all hearing me? The Lord said, get in the ship and go to the other side. You say, Brother Lawrence, God would never put me in a trial. Well, then how do you explain the Bible? How do you explain when Jesus went to go pray, He leads the disciples right into the biggest storm they've ever seen. But did He leave them alone, Brother Brian? All of a sudden, look here. The thunder 
the lightning the waves are crashing the boat's about to sink they look around and said man can you believe Jesus would leave us out here to die can you believe that's the lie that the devil will tell you tomorrow and the next day and he probably told you that today and yesterday and last week that God's going to let you die that you're struggling all these things are going on around you the billows are well uh, washing high the boat's about to sink I mean you're trying to hold your head above water but oh hey in the fourth watch of the night hey they said hey I think that's a ghost and Peter said oh no that's Jesus amen hey how did he know it was Jesus cause he'd been here he'd been to the place brother Brian he knew Jesus he knew his voice he knew who he was he knew what he looked like and my friends when you get to that place of power and blessing and it comes in the secret place it comes in your quiet time with the Lord in your prayer time my friends like Peter you can say I know his presence I know what he feels like when someone sings a song with God on it I know what he feels like when brother Doug preaches and when he preaches and he jumps and he kicks and God's all over it because Jesus gave him the message hey Peter said that's Jesus and all because he'd been in this quiet place because he'd been in the place brother Clint oh you know what Peter did you know what that does brother Gary you know what happened to Peter's faith it got big so big let me ask you this have you ever walked on water neither have I but Peter did you know why because he knew Jesus when he saw him hey and Peter stepped out of the boat and kept his eyes on Jesus and he walked on the water and in your secret place when you get to the secret place to that place of power where God will pour out his blessing where he'll open your eyes where he'll deliver you from your sin where he'll deliver you from the things of this world and anoint you with power I'm telling you church that's the place that God will bless you amen man you say brother Lawrence why you get so excited because I believe it I believe that does it look like this is fake because if this looks like it's fake we can start all over amen I believe that you know why because I've seen it I've seen it time after time hey look here sister Tammy was there and she was my witness Sunday had nothing to do with me I had nothing to do. She was there. You was there. You can ask her afterwards. I was preaching. Their eyes, they wouldn't look at nowhere. Do you know how odd that is for a jail service? They're not looking around. They're not trying to find the next guy walking by. That happens. The Holy Ghost had their attention. But he really got their attention. And Jesus walked into that room when I preached on repentance. And when the power of God fell, she was there. There was no smiling. There was no cracking jokes. There was no talking to one another. One girl took her shirt and pulled it up over her face and wept uncontrollably in it till it was wet with tears, hiding herself from God. Another girl buried her face in her arms and just wept. Another girl put her hands over her face and wept brother Lawrence can't do that oh but I can tell you who can Amen. and all I could do it wasn't flowery it wasn't a message on heaven and grandma and grandpa and walking the streets of glory I preach repentance on their sin and how they better turn if they want to live and they better turn from the direction they're going they've been going so far in the wrong direction and you may be just like them you've been walking in one direction so long and you've turned around there's nobody there I can tell you friends repentance is turning it's turning amen and when you turn you look back amen Jesus will walk with you he'll grab you by the hand when you're ready amen he'll turn and walk all the way amen my friends that is God's power 
That's God's power, Brother Brian. And that only comes from here. Church, if, I can t if you listen to anything else I say, this prayer time that you've committed to, whether it's in your car, whether it's in your basement, beside your bed, beside your machine, Brother Brian, at work, if you commit to that, and not just say words, but meet with Jesus in His secret place, my friends, you talk about transforming. You will be more like Jesus. He will change you. And I can tell you, it's something that Brother Doug can't do. No preacher can do that. Only God can do that. And let me just say this and I'll be done here. Hang on. Church, Satan hates the sacred place. The sacred place. You see, God gave us this. God loved the church and He gave Himself for it. This place is sacred. And Satan hates the church, Brother Ray. He wants to shut the church doors. He wants to, hey, he wants to water down the preaching. He wants to water down the singing. He wants to get into any crack he can. He wants to pollute the church. He wants to, hey, he wants to build it up with lies and envy and strife and discord. He hates the sacred place. And my friends, what's happened is, is we believe some of the lies. You say, Brother Lawrence, how you know? We'll look around tonight. Amen. I mean, Sunday morning, the place was packed. And let me just say this, church. I'm going to give you this because the Lord gave us to me. You all know the Ten Commandments, right? Turn with me to Exodus chapter number 20. Look with me, man. I mean, this is as basic as it gets right here. Exodus 20. You say, Brother Lawrence, you're going to preach the Ten Commandments? We're going to be here all night. I'm going to preach to you one verse. One verse. You see, Satan hates this place. But look what Exodus 20 verse 9 says. Six days shalt thou labor and do some of thy work. Six days shalt thou labor and do all thy work. Now God could have said, I'm going to put in the Ten Commandments that you're going to serve me seven days a week. And you're going to honor those days. But you know what he did? He wants one. In other words, God said this. You got six days to get up early, to work late, to cut your yard, to do all the things that you need to do to fill your little heart with, to fill your life with, to entertain yourself with. But I want one day. Amen. And you get up to go to church and people's cutting their grass. They're playing ball. Hey, I'm trying to tell you, church, it's breaking God's Word. Amen. Six days shalt thy labor and do all thy work. That's only one of the Ten Commandments. Church, I figure you ain't killed nobody or stole this week. Amen. But I'm here to tell you, church, Satan hates this place. He hates your family and the way, the way he knows that your family will be vulnerable, that your look here, church, that your family will not be fruitful, that your family won't have power, your family won't have leadership and wisdom and blessing and God's hand is if you don't love his house. You say, Brother Lawrence, Brother Doug preaches this all the time. Amen. That's the Bible. Church, how many days a week do you need to work? I'm here to tell you, my wife would tell you, praise God. If I could get paid to a gospel track, hallelujah, I'd quit tomorrow. Because I don't like getting up, brother, of Josh and going to work. I just don't. Because you know when I'm at work, you know what happens? Something starts turning around in here. Work 
Working's what I get paid to do. That's what I was made to do. Working is what you get paid to do. Serving Jesus is what you were made to do. You say, Brother Lawrence, you're just a preacher. No, that applies to you. Because God created you in His image. And He wants your life to bring glory and honor to Him. You say, Brother Lawrence, that's harsh preaching. No, listen to me. Listen to me, church. Look here. This has nothing to do with anything. I'm trying to preach to you what God told me to preach and you can like it or not. I'm just trying to tell you if you want God's power and you want God's blessing, this church, we got to love the sacred place, the house of God. Amen. You got to fall in love with it, man. I mean, love it to death. Well, that went over great. I'm telling you, amen. Well, whew. amen. A place, the sacred place, a place to be fed. It's a place to fellowship. It's a place to be reminded of what we already know. A place to be reminded of sin and what it does to our lives and our families. And man, if it got quiet in here, it's going to really get quiet now. Turn with me to 2 Corinthians chapter number 6. I'm almost finished. Hang on. Hang on now, church. Amen. 2 Corinthians chapter number 6. Satan hates your separated place. 2 Corinthians chapter number 2. I'm sorry, 2 Corinthians 6 verse 7, 17. Wherefore come out from among them, and be ye separate, saith the Lord, and touch not the unclean thing, and I will receive you. He say, Brother Lawrence, I don't know about that. That's all that legalistic doctrine. Well, the Bible says come out from among them, and be ye separate. Let me ask you this. Look at me, church. Is there a difference between holy and unholy? Is there a difference between clean and unclean? God didn't say just come out from among you and be separate. God saved you and separated you from the world to himself. Because he's a jealous God. Amen. So in other words... This is not about Brother Lord saying, Oh man, I'm holier than now. No. God said, Be ye holy, for I am holy. In other words, if you mind the Lord, if you are true to His Word, you'll love His house. You'll be separated unto Him. You'll find Him in His secret place. Amen. Hallelujah. Come out from among you. Be separate. Man, I tell you what. Amen. That come across real good. Separated to God. Look here, church. To bear fruit for the Lord, you must be separated unto God. In other words, look here. If you love everything else more than God's house, you're not separated, church. Are you hearing me? If everything else takes the place of your secret place and your secret time and the secret place in the closet with God, wherever that, if everything else is taking up the place in your heart, your mind, your time, your life, your family, I'm telling you, church, it's not separated. Amen. It's not separated. That's hard preaching. I'm telling you, it's hard. That's hard preaching. But if you want to bear fruit for God, you must be. Not maybe. Not must. What do we have going on? Coming up? Revival. I'm going to tell you this, church, right now. Everything that we've hit here tonight. We don't do any of those. Revival will not come. We do some of those. It's not going to come. It's not. Because revival is not in Brother Phillips. 
It's in your relationship with God. When no one, look here church, when no one's looking around, when the pastor's not there, when your husband's not there, and when your wife's not there, that's when revival takes place. Because if you don't do it there, you won't do it here. Because here it would just be fake. Just be motions, words. And finishing, he hates your surrendered place. He hates your surrendered place. I can tell you right now, Satan does not want you to surrender to him, to the Lord Jesus Christ. You say, Brother Lawrence, what do I got to do? In Romans 12, 1, the Bible says, I beseech you therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God that ye present your bodies a living sacrifice. You say, Brother Lawrence, sacrifices don't live. That's right. If you die to your flesh, your spirit will live. You kill the flesh. You sacrifice your flesh day in and day out. You separate yourself to God. You get in your quiet time of the Most High in that secret place. You sacrifice. You kill it. And I'm telling you, the more you kill this flesh, the more you kill this body, the more your spirit will live. The more, hey, the bigger your smile gets. The bigger the sparkle in your eye. The pep in your step. Hey, the spring in your walk. Amen. The sweeter your walk with Jesus gets I beseech you therefore brethren by the mercies of God you present your bodies a living sacrifice holy say bro aren't you a hard preacher no Paul is holy be holy from holy acceptable unto God which is your reasonable service reasonable and be not conformed to this world but be transformed by the renewing of your mind that you may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God you say Paul Lawrence I don't know God's plan I don't know God's purpose I don't know why I'm in this trial I don't know why God's doing this I don't know why this is happening in my home I'm here to tell you it could be his perfect will it could be his plan but you gotta learn to kill that flesh so your spirit can live and the why our churches are dead is because our flesh is alive and we're uh, engulfed in Hollywood in this world and the spirit of God is nowhere to be found nowhere to be found say brother Lawrence you're crazy crazy about Jesus I'm going to tell you right now this is where you surrender and this altar tonight is where you can surrender God gives you the, uh, the way so I'll stand brother Josh I don't know if you have time